Hi there everybody and welcome to today's craft tutorial from Lechlade Craft Barn. My name is Jenny and along with my business partner Karen we run Lechlade Craft Barn here in the Cotswolds. And today we're going to show you a really simple make, making folded gift boxes out of paper. Great one for Mother's Day, for Easter gifts, for birthday presents, all sorts of things. They're so simple to make and all you need is some pieces of paper and it really is as simple as that. We're going to get folding, there's no sticking required, so really, really simple. You can see more of our tutorials on our YouTube channel, which is Let's Laid Craft Barn. And we also pop our tutorials onto our Facebook page. So if you go onto Facebook, again, you can find us as Letch Laid Craft Barn. We're also on Instagram and we have an Etsy shop where we sell craft kits and supplies, all sorts of goodies. So go and have a look on there and see if there's anything that appeals. So let's get on with the tutorial. I'm just going to switch over to my hand cam. Excuse the state of my lockdown hands. They are looking about 90 years old. But we'll get going and I'll show you this really simple, lovely make. Okay, so here we are. So our gift boxes look like this. They're so, so simple to make, as I was saying, and they're just made from decorative paper, not card because that can be a little bit stiff. They're just folded. You don't need to stick anything. So it's a great one to try with the kids or the grandkids if you want to, but they just look so pretty for little gifts. And um, I've made a, one here with a little duck stamp. So I simply stamped my paper before I got going and then made my box from it. Um, you don't need anything fancy. It might be that you've got some decorative paper like this at home for using for card making or scrapbooking. Or it might be that you've got something like flyers in your recycling drawer. We love recycling and upcycling at the barn, so it'd be great to use something that you might have otherwise thrown away. You just need some paper that's got a little bit of rigidity to it. I'm using a large sheet of 12 by 12 paper for the demo so that you can see what I'm doing. But for this size, I just started with a piece of A4 and then I cut that down so that I started with my square, but all that will be clearer in a moment. And this one was just a little bit smaller. This was about 18 centimetres. And I will talk you through um, all of the steps and explain how you make your top and bottom a different size so that one will fit onto the other. So as I say, we need to start with a square of paper. So I've picked a springy yellowy floral paper here and I've already made the bottom to my box in a toning contrasting paper. Hopefully you can see that in yellows. And I've made the bottom in the same way that we're going to make the top, but the bottom is about half a centimetre all the way around smaller. So I cut off half a centimetre from one side and half a centimetre off the other side so that I still have a square, but I was able to fold it to make my bottom. And then we'll have a slightly larger lid, which will fit over the top. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm turning my paper over so that my pattern is down. And it might be that you have a double-sided pattern, that doesn't matter, but just remember which side you want to be. Your um, outer pattern has to be face down as we get started. So I'm just going to fold that over into a triangle. And I'm using a bone folder to give myself really nice sharp creases. If you don't have one of these, the back of a table knife will do, or just something that will allow you to smooth out these creases so that they're really nice and fine. And it's quite important for this make that we get good creases and be as accurate as possible. If you don't get your folds accurate, then you get a skew whiffy box, technical term, but it won't fit with your um, other piece to make a uh, box if you haven't got it square. So I'm just carefully pushing that down. And then again, I'm using my bone folder on my craft mat, nice and firm. And just stroking it along so we've got really good sharp creases. So you can see I've now got that cross in the middle where I folded it both ways. And I'm just gonna take my specs off here so I can see what I'm doing. 
Um, and what I'm going to do now is take each of the four points and I'm going to fold those into the centre and I want them to meet as accurately as possible in the centre of this square. So I'm holding that down with my finger and again using my bone folder to get a nice sharp crease there. Rotate 90 degrees, do the same again. And we want that to be nice and flush. Pop my bone folder on there. Go for a nice sharp crease. And same again, third one. Get a good crease. It now looks like an envelope. And my fourth one. So I folded it back into another square. And this is actually an origami make. If you're into origami, you may have done this already. But uh, that's where it originates from. Okay, so we folded all our four corners into the centre. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the sides in half. So I'm folding this edge to follow that centre line that you can see where you folded it. And I find it easiest if I just fold it over and hold it. And then I like to turn it so that I can run my bone folder from top to bottom. If your paper is a little bit thick or you try to use card, just be careful it doesn't buckle up here. I'm sort of using my bone folder going out like that because this is quite a firm paper and I don't want it to crease up and it to be uneven. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm bringing the edge into the centre. I may not have got this as beautifully accurate as I wanted. But we will see how we go using my bone folder and I'm applying quite a bit of pressure here because it's a firm piece of paper and also because um, it's quite big uh, I'm sort of making sure that we get it all nice and flat and nothing pings open so once you've done that open it back out and do the same on the other side so again we're taking the outer edge into the center and run your bone folder or your back of your table knife or just something, even a ruler, but just make sure the edge is clean so that you don't get any pen or ink on your lovely paper. And I'm going to do the same again, fourth time on the other side. So I've done the same both ways. There we go. And I'm just going to open that back out. So you can see we do have a lot of creases on the paper, but that's going to help us to construct our box. What we want to do now is just open out two of those corners. And you can see that we've got lines where we form squares from the way that we folded it. And what we're going to do is cut from here to here on both sides. So we're always making sure that there's two squares in the middle and then we're cutting two squares up. So make sure above your point you've got two squares, above that you'll have another two squares and we're cutting along these lines here. So I've got my super long scissors because I'm working on big paper. So you can see I've cut along there, I've still got my two squares in the middle. And I'm doing the same on the other side. Okay, so you should be able to see that. So the, the sides that I've left here, you've got a triangle and a square sitting under that flap. Okay, so I'm going to turn that over and do exactly the same on the other side. I'm leaving my two squares, two lots of two squares, my triangle at the end and I'm cutting down two squares, following those creases as accurately as possible. Just make sure you don't cut your side flap. There we go. So I'm almost ready now to construct my box. And I find it easier at this point, if I just bend these little side triangles back slightly, 
it'll just come together a little bit more easily. You'll see how that helps us in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these sides up and I want to keep the, the ends I've cut on the outside and I'm going to simply flap over those two side pieces. So I've bent them up and I am simply flapping them over. So you can see why I bent those so they were a little bit flatter because if they're sticking out you then get such a flat finish. So I've got those standing up and I'm just holding those there. And then I'm bringing my side piece up. This is where I haven't cut it completely perfectly. This needs a bit of a firm hand. And then I am just folding that over. So I haven't done the most beautiful job on this one, but there we go. So you can see I've got one side tucked in already. These are already here because where we folded the sides up, those pieces will sit in the middle. And what I actually do if I'm doing these as a sample, and you might want to do the same, if I'm going to remind myself later what size this was, so this is a 12 inch, just for reference for you crafters, I write it under the flap in pencil. Um, and if you do end up giving it to somebody, they're never going to see that anyway. So I've done one side and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So my sides are already up. I'm putting those one behind the other, standing up like that. And then I'm lifting up that side I cut, folding it over and just popping it into place. Now, if you've got any sort of springy paper and you think it's not going to stay down, you can, of course, put a little bit of double sided tape or glue or something under that. Um, depends what you're making it with. If you try this with card, it's not the most successful because it's just a little bit too tough. It um, doesn't crease particularly well and it ends up looking a little bit wrinkled. But let's keep fingers crossed that my top fits over my bottom. And there we go. So there I have my gift box and they're pretty sturdy, even though it's made from paper obviously it's not flimsy paper but it has got some strength to it um, so you'd be fine to put your Easter mini eggs for example in these or um, or gifts as I say or anything that you might want to put it put in there we go and of course if you make a few up you can store them flat and keep them flat stored ready for when you might need them they are so, so simple to make and you can just make them in lovely, beautiful papers like these and your friends, I'm sure, will be extremely grateful. So that's the end of our make for today. We've got some more coming up on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page very soon and I hope that I will see you there. If you are on Facebook, pop along and leave pictures of your makes for us so that Karen and I can have a good look. Don't forget you can find out everything about us on lechladecraftbarn.com, which also has links to our Facebook, to our Instagram and to our Etsy page. Anyway, hope you enjoy making the boxes and we'll see you soon. Bye.